thing button now. And I, again, like to welcome everyone to our February Lunch and Learn for the Faith Network, that stands for Faith Academic Initiatives for Transforming Health. My name is Kanisha Bryant-Moore, and I serve as the director of the Faith Network. And Crystal Joan is also on um, the Zoom with us today. She serves as the program manager for the Faith Network. And we have other folks that are coming in and are here as well um, that serve as ambassadors for the Faith Network. Um, I see Pastor Givens on my screen, and there may be others with us. I think Emmanuel may be here as well. Um, so. We're happy that you all have joined us um, today along with our guest. So I um, want to introduce to everyone, um, and some of you already may know her, <laughs> Ms. Sharonda uh, Love. She is at Arkansas Children's Hospital as part of the community engagement team there and works as the partnerships director. And she's here today to talk about community health needs and the Natural Wonders Partnership Council. Um, I will say the Natural Wonders Council is near and dear to me because they did provide funding for one of my projects um, a few years ago called Motherhood um, Together, which is a prenatal education program uh, for women facing homelessness and housing insecurity. And that program still exists. Um, I'm no longer um, running it, but it's still up and going. And it was thanks to those funds that actually launched that program that's been going on now for, um, I think, three or four years. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Ms. Love, and we're just happy to see you today. Well, I am happy to be here, and I want to thank you so much for the opportunity to come and speak to the Faith Network today about our Community Health Needs Assessment and the Natural Wonders Partnership Council. Um, again, I just want to, to um, recognize what you just said as it relates to being able to provide funding to truly work on and impact initiatives that impact family and um, children within our state. And so hopefully after um, the presentation today, I will have provided some opportunities for collaboration with the Faith Network members um, to talk a little bit more about the Community Health Needs Assessment or CHNA, um, as we call it and introduce our Natural Wonders goals, um, as well as talk about the community health funding that, that you received. So our community health needs assessment um, is a process that is done with all um, nonprofit hospitals. It currently is a um, federal requirement, but Natural Wonders and Arkansas Children's has been implementing this for quite some time, even before um, it, it was federally required. And so the Community Health Needs Assessment is a um, process that goes along a, about a three-year implementation plan. Um, and it we utilize community benefit dollars and work to reach children within our state. And we have a report that is generated um, regarding that. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more here about that. So Arkansas Children's System does two community health needs assessment, one for our hospital here in Little Rock, and then one also for our hospital in Springdale. The um, community health needs assessment that's done out of the Little Rock Hospital focuses on the entire state, while our um, ACNW, Northwest Arkansas um, Hospital um, Community Health Needs Assessment focuses on the four counties predominantly in Northwest, Benton, Carroll, and Washington, um, as well as Madison counties. So the way the community health needs assessment works is we truly do a deep dive with um, listening and collecting data from stakeholders throughout our entire state. We do that through a number of sources. So we have a parent survey where we um, conduct a, a questionnaire that's over 35 questions. 
It is usually completed during the months of August through September um, in, in our data collection um, year. And it looks at um, community health topics um, as well as diversity and inclusion. And our 2020 um, community health needs assessment also had a focus on impacts of COVID-19. We also did focus groups, um, a total of 18 focus groups within our state. And after conducting those focus groups, we realized that we had, um, that our Hispanic population wasn't as well represented. So we were intentional about going back to do um, four additional focus groups that targeted Hispanic um, families, um, caregivers, medical providers, so that we made sure that we were inclusive of, of all populations represented within our state. Um, and those focus groups were um, included categories or participants from educators, community leaders, medical partners, as well as parents and caregivers. In addition, we conducted key informant interviews with stakeholders. Many of those participate in our Natural Wonders um, Partnership Council, which I'll talk about a little bit later, as well as utilize quantitative data um, within our state um, from our State Department of Health, State Department of Human um, Services, as well as ACHI, um, and also some national data from any EKC Kids Count, um, as well as county health rankings. And with that data, we utilize a rating and waiting period um, to make sure that we incorporated um, different um, um, community needs and specifically had a focus on health disparities, whereas um, we wanted to make sure that we were looking at equity within this um, 2020 community health needs assessment. And so our priority needs identified with the community and um, the CHNA. I'm going to just say CHNA for now. Um, and so you guys will know that that's what I mean when I reference the, the health needs assessment. So we identified priority, um, secondary, pr primary priorities, excuse me, secondary priorities, as well as some other underlying issues that we've seen all along um, related to child health needs. And so for our primary priorities, we um, the stakeholders identified behavioral and mental health, immunizations, and food insecurity. For our secondary priorities, um, infant health and child abuse was identified. And then what we have seen all along across all of our community health needs assessment included access to care, childhood obesity, as well as injury prevention, with poverty and financing, finances being an intersecting need that we saw across all of these um, child health needs. And so while our um, CHNA implementation plan is quite extensive and has um, actions and initiatives for each of the primary um, priorities as well as our secondary priorities, I wanted to just share an example of how we are being intentional with looking at metrics as well as action steps and initiatives for addressing each of the, the child health needs that was identified. And I will share a link with you all so that you will be able to review the implementation plan in detail and um, look at how we are being intentional with targeting priority um, needs for our, ch our children within our state um, and working not only internally with Arkansas Children's departments, but externally 
with partners in an effort to truly address the needs um, identified for, for children. Um, and then you will also notice um, I, I pulled out child abuse and neglect um, here as, as an example, because I think that this truly ties in with, uh, with an area that um, our faith-based community might be able to support families and children within our state. And I'll talk a little bit more about that as we um, discuss our Natural Wonders partnership and some of the goals and the work groups um, within the Natural Wonders partnership. And so here is the link for the full report for our um, 2022 Community Health Needs Assessment and the implementation plan, um, both for our Arkansas Children's Hospital um, Central um, plan, as well as our Northwest Arkansas plan. And I will be sure to share these slides, um, as well as the link with Dr. Bryant Moore so that she can share those um, with each of you. And so now I would like to talk with you about our Natural Wonders Partnership Council, which is a statewide coalition of diverse child health stakeholders. And so the Natural Wonders Partnership Council is made up of health organizations, nonprofit um, organizations, state agencies, and funders that work to support and address the health needs of children in Arkansas, specifically those health needs identified within our community health needs assessment. Natural Wonders is convened by Arkansas Children's Hospital um, and um, with Arkansas Children's being one of the only um, being the only child health system here within our state, we dedicate um, time as the backbone agency to serve our Natural Wonders partners through um, finances, administrative support, logistics, as well as evaluative support um, to champion those strategic issues identified within um, our, our CHNA. And so the Natural Wonders Partnership Council meets, the general um, council meets quarterly um, on the fourth Friday of the quarter, January, April, July, and October. The meeting is virtual. There is usually a guest presenter uh, to discuss um, a topic. Um, it, sometimes topics are recommended by our stakeholders. Sometimes topics are selected based on what has been identified as a need for children within our state. And it is also an opportunity for members to provide updates about work and initiatives that they have within their organization. Our partners also share information regarding meetings, deadlines, as well as applications for funding opportunities. And so um, this is one way that I think would be beneficial to get connected with the Faith Network um, and collaborate not only with the Natural Wonders Partnership, but to interact and work with other stakeholders within our state that are focusing on child health needs. And so within Natural Wonders, there is our general um, membership, but our work groups are um, developed to actually put the CHNA into action and truly have an opportunity for our stakeholders to address the priority areas identified within the CHNA. And so we have five groups that are either led or co-led by stakeholders from within the general membership. Um, currently, the meetings are still being held virtually. Um, they previously met in person prior to the pandemic. We did a, um, a 
a survey to ask how folks wanted to continue to meet going forward. And so far, virtual is what was selected, and we will continue to um, to look into um, the the preference for the group to determine um, the best method to meet. And the work groups. Um, utilize their time to focus on developing goals and implementing objectives and strategies in an effort to address the CHNA priority areas. And so I would like to take an opportunity to just introduce each of the work groups, the goals that they are working on, and give you an opportunity to just have a view into how um, you might be able to, to work and support um, some of the, the work group efforts. And so our first group is the Building Community Assets Work Group. They um, have a um, have goals to focus on food insecurity, financial literacy, as well as healthcare. And so, truly making sure that we're improving access and participation in year-round um, nutrition programs for students. So, um, what we know um, with food access being identified as a prior primary um, priority um, for our CHNA is kids sometimes are dependent upon being able to have those meals during school time. But what happens to them outside of school time, in the evenings, on the weekends, during the summer? And so this group is really working at um, how to expand access to uh, programs so that children are able um, to get get food when they're not in school, um, you know, backpack for kids programs, um, 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 food pantry access, things like that. Also, um, this group is working on financial literacy, making sure that we are partnering with community partners um, and providing access to financial literacy for children and families within our state um, in an effort to make sure that it ties back into that food security and making sure that they have access to the, to the things that they need financially. Um, and then, of course, healthcare. Um, we know that um, food access or, or lack thereof impacts our overall health. And um, not only does it impact our um, physical health, it impacts mental and emotional health as well. So being able to work through our school-based health clinics, our school health um, coordinators and partners in an effort to um, make sure that we're saturating resources and getting them to, to children and families at all levels, but also um, making sure that we're providing access to resources through partners, um, working to make sure that we have access to pilot programs to test and see um, if we are able to work through partners um, to try and, and, and see if um, things like fresh fruits and vegetable programs in the clinic, if we do um, social determinants of health screeners to see if there are needs and having um, access to food bags so that if a family identifies that they have a food insecurity need, it can be provided in the clinic setting um, before they leave, as well as getting um, access to services like our Resource Connect so that they will know where to access those services locally when they go back home um, as well. Our next work group is our mental health and well being work group. This um, group is focusing on positive mental health um, and providing access to evidence based training like our um, like first. Uh, mental health first aid, um, also making sure that we are working through policy and programs to address the needs of young children to provide access to quality mental health services, and then ultimately making sure that we are supporting those who provide support to our kids, so who counsels the counselors, um, and in the faith networks, um, um, case who's counseling the pastors, um, those people that are, are there to listen and help 
through problems um, with those that they serve, making sure that we are also addressing and providing access to services for them as well. Our next um, group is the first 2100 days of life. And so that encompasses birth through five years old. And so this group is specifically looking at providing education for um, safety baby showers for underserved populations. What we know in our state is um, that our minority populations see a very high um, rate of maternal mortality and infant mortality. Mortality. And so making sure that we're not only getting access to information to those underserved populations, but also making sure that there's clear representation um, in those education materials so that when we provide it, the, those um, populations actually see someone that looks like them. Um, if we know that we're going to be in a Marshallese population um, or a Hispanic or African American population, then are we providing access to um, information and materials that they will be able to identify with. Um, in addition to that, one of the things that was pointed out by one of our stakeholders is um, we have um, information and materials that are adapted for um, for racial minority populations, but what about other minority populations, especially differently abled populations? So are we doing our due diligence to make sure that materials are offered in Braille? Um, or are we finding ways to make sure that we are um, are um, educating and or adapting materials for other differently abled populations. Um, and then finally, looking at um, breastfeeding support, um, especially um, providing a resource toolkit for employers within our state to support um, employees returning back to work after birth. The next group is increasing immunizations. Um, this group is working on recruiting pharmacies um, to um, provide access to DFC vaccines, as well as developing recruitment plans and campaign messages for partners um, around advocacy for vaccines, as well as working through school nurses and the community health promotion specialists, as well as community health nurse specialists to provide immunization access. Um, another um, um, initiative out of this work group, Arkansas Children's has been currently working on a pilot. Um, what we know is during the pandemic, we saw a dramatic, dramatic decrease in vaccinations, just regular immunizations for children within our state. Um, whether that was due to lack of access, inability to get in with a doctor, and or vaccine hesitancy. And so we have been looking at providing access to, uh, to childhood uh, vaccinations at the community level, working with churches, working with schools and other community organizations. Um, and so far have been able to reach nine counties and provide just over 700 vaccines. And so, um, and, and with this pilot project, we're going to be targeting and through the rest of the fiscal year through June, we will target um, the younger age groups that um, under 36 month age group under three years old in an effort to see if we can truly reach those young children who may not have gotten vaccines, especially here during the pandemic. And so being able to work through churches um, to reach those families that might be in need and haven't been able to get to a doctor um, would be one benefit and way that we might be able to collaborate um, with faith leaders. 
And then our final work group is our healthy relationships and child abuse um, group. Currently, we are seeking a group leader, um, someone that is passionate about supporting children and families, knowledgeable about services and resources that are available, um, and have the ability to lead the group through goal setting as well as implementation. Um, at our previous Natural Wonders Partnership um, meeting that was uh, in January, the state police reported and um, they gave us a, a report on the child abuse prevention um, or child abuse hotline, excuse me, um, report that they do quarterly and um, identified that of the calls that they receive, 60% of them are identified as being true. And of that 60%, 40% um, of those child abuse calls are, um, are sexual abuse related calls. And so we know that this is a work group that is one that's truly in need. Um, we also know that within our state, it apparently is, is one that we really need to be able to, um, to focus on so that we can impact the, the, um, the rates within our state. And, and so because churches um, have such a strong um, um, impact on families and children, and are able to help with reaching families, I think this would also be a great opportunity to work together. And so for more information about the Natural Wonders Partnership Council, you can contact myself or Beatrice Mundragon, and I will make sure that um, Dr. Bryant Moore has access to our email so that you can, can can give us a email or a call if you need. And then finally, just wanna talk about our community health fund. Um, Dr. Bryant Moore mentioned earlier that she was able to be a recipient of this funding opportunity. And I um, like to be able to share because it is just another way of us being able to meet people where they are and get access to funding and programs to truly impact um, children's needs. And so um, our community health fund is an opportunity to develop and strengthen partnerships that support pilots and or test of change programs on critical health issues. Currently, um, our child health priority um, issues for the community health fund include infant mortality, preventing child abuse, and increasing immunizations. Um, and this funding is to support new or innovative programs, projects, or strategies that, if proven successful, could potentially be scaled up for broad, broader impact. Um, and like Dr. Bryant Moore said, she started the program, but it's still up and going. And so that's truly what we want to be able to see with community health funding. Um, currently, we are looking at um, counties, including uh, the ones listed here, Ashley, Benton, Craighead, Faulkner, Jefferson, Pulaski, Union, and Washington. Um, but while we are targeting those areas, um, definitely would um, be able to consider others if, if there is a need and an application submitted. Um, the Community Health Fund does not support projects that involve research, address routine services um, or delivery of activities, or have the sole purpose of an event sponsorship. Um, the applicants can request funding for one year um, from anywhere from $5,000 to up to $50,000 um, and can be considered for additional funding um, for a second year if the, the project um, is of need. And some examples of some community health fund um, 
projects would include, we had a program that wanted to be able to purchase child abuse booklets so that they could share it and provide it um, for their community members. Um, we had one group that did babysitting courses to support child safety and to teach parents and others about how to safely babysit um, to decrease infant mortality risk um, during babysitting situations. We've had individuals um, and, and or organizations to do vaccine initiatives food access programs like backpack programs, um, um, food pantry programs, things like that. And so again, you can contact myself or Beatrice for any information regarding the work groups or the community health fund. And um, just um, as a recap, I think ways that we might be able to participate and or collaborate together would be um, as a um, community health needs assessment stakeholder, um, as a natural wonders partnership stakeholder, whether that is through general membership, work group membership, um, a community vaccine event, um, as well as community health funding um, applications. So I know I went a little bit over my 30 minutes, um, but does anyone have any questions? Hi, Ms. Love, this is uh, Erica Liebelt. And um, thank you so much for that excellent presentation. I'm relatively new to Little Rock. I work at Children's, I'm a pediatric ER physician but I also am one of the medical directors at the Poison Center. And I know that you know Charlie Stutz very well. He, he is on the call, but he was booked for three different conference calls right now. But I just wanna extend our handout uh, to you to, uh, as we certainly would love to continue partnering with your strategies, specifically, you know, our services address injury prevention in terms of poison prevention. And there are a lot of emerging trends that we're seeing now with little kids um, with regards to preventing poisonings, um, as well as your behavioral and mental health strategy. I'm one of the toxicology attendings too at Children's, and we're seeing an escalation of intentional overdoses in our adolescent population requiring admission. Uh, to the hospital. Um, you know, the Poison Center services are free of charge. And I think regarding, you know, accidental poisonings in young children, uh, we continue to educate about safe storage of medications. Um, and we can provide a safe communication modality for parents and caregivers and siblings to call um, as many times these children do not need to go to the ER, as you guys are all aware, our ER is so overwhelmed right now with volume and the risk of, you know, multiple viral illnesses, our waiting times are long. And if a child doesn't need to be there, we can help facilitate that. So anyway, I think there's many opportunities. We are working with the Injury Prevention Center at Children's, but I I didn't know about um, this Natural Wonders Partnership and you guys are doing incredible, incredible work. And um, thank you again for this presentation. Thank you for that, Dr. Lee Belt. I will be sure to um, make to get you added to our invitation list for our April um, general meeting. And if you are interested in participating in any of the work group, I'll, um, make contact to, to get you added to those as well. I joined a little bit late. This is Steve Sullivan, but do y'all have any specific charges that you are working with or just kind of, I'm just wondering about that. I know you're targeting charges and trying to involve them. I just know you had any specific churches there in Little Rock that you're working with. 
For sure. So we um, we will be down in Pine Bluff at New St. Hurricane on the 18th, I believe, to do vaccine initiatives. And we have worked with with other churches. I don't have the list here in front of me, uh, unfortunately. But um, yes, we. I could. I'm happy to to get that list to you if you're interested in knowing like when and where. I'm in North Carolina, so I'm just kind of curious about it. But um, yeah, that's good that you that you do have some specific churches that you're engaging. Uh, that's awesome. And we had a couple of messages in the chat. Um, the first one is um, from Emmanuel Navarro. He is actually one of our Faith Network ambassadors, and he left his contact information there in the chat for you, Ms. Lev. Um, um, his church is um, in Conway. Okay. So I don't know if you have any uh, connections there. It looks like Charlie left a smiley face and let us know that he was, he was between one of his three calls. Um, and I did have a question, um, too, regarding how do people access the Natural Wonders Fund application? Do they just need to email you for that, or is it available online somewhere? So, so yes, um, they can email me directly. We usually announce to our Natural Wonders Partnership Council when those are available, and so um, May uh, is when we usually make them available because we'll want to have them submitted by the end of June um, so that we can review those and, and have them funded by the beginning of the fiscal year, which our fiscal year is July 1 through June 30. And so the intent is to fund for the entire year. So May um, is when they're usually available. But if, if anyone is interested, they can email me. And when that time and opportunity becomes Becomes available, um, Beatrice and myself will make sure that they're contacted. Okay, awesome. Um, because I will then just, um, but we have some other um, leaders that aren't on the call that I know would be interested in learning more about that opportunity. And actually, we have some um, nonprofit organizations that we work with as well um, that may be interested in contacting you. Okay. Well, and let me make sure that my contact information is listed here so that I can. And of course, I did not include my email address there. But I will put it. It was on one of the earlier ones. I'll put it in the chat. Okay. <laughs> You have, you have an easy email to remember. Yes, love. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any more questions for Ms. Love? Uh, all right, so if you're not already on the Faith Network um, e-newsletter distribution, I did include my email address in the chat as well. Uh, so if you want to be added, we can definitely add you to that. It comes out um, on the 15th and 30th of every month. And I will not take the credit for sending it out. It is totally <laughs> Crystal who does all that hard work of getting the, the email out to everyone. Uh, we will have another Lunch and Learn on March 8th, which is, again, that we do them the second Tuesday of every month at noon. And Crystal, please correct me if I'm not right. I believe it is Arkansas 211 yeah. who will be with us next month. And um, they um, really connect folks to social services within the community. So it's kind of like instead of calling 911 for emergency, you can call 211 to get resources that you may need within um, your community. Um, so they'll be joining us next week, I mean, next, week, next month. And we also have some training opportunities that will be coming up. Um, the first one will be next month for researchers and other people who are research teams interested 
and engaging the faith community. Um, Steve Sullivan, who's on the Zoom now, is a part of that team along with Crystal and myself and um, Dr. Laverne Moore Carter, who's actually based out of Virginia. And so if you know any researchers who are interested in um, the ins and outs of engaging the faith community in research activities, uh, please look out for that information in our e-newsletter. And later this year, we're going to have a couple of training opportunities for faith leaders who want to serve as consultants for research projects or how to engage in um, um, research in some capacity. Uh, so how do you, you know, serve as a consultant? So if you're interested in that uh, opportunity, again, uh, look out in our e-newsletter and we'll be providing uh, more information about that. And I believe that is all we have for, uh, for this month. And so we are thankful for everyone who are joining us. We are a little bit slow with getting our videos up and on the website, um, but I'm, I'm trying to now get them on YouTube so we can just send them out with the e-newsletter instead of people having to find it on the, um, the website itself. So we are working on that. So if you know of anyone who um, you think this information would be valuable, again, um, ha have them join our e-newsletter. That's the easiest way. Um, because like, again, getting the information on the, the website takes a little bit longer than we would, would like it to. Oh, I did forget. We also have a Faith Network podcast now. So our first podcast was released in January. And um, again, that link went out um, in our e-newsletter distribution list. And I believe we'll be including it in the next e-newsletter as well. So people can access that. The first one was an introductory of what the Faith Network is and what we do and why we do what we do. And we're doing the first um, half of this year focusing on mental health. Um, so talking about how to access mental health resources, uh, resilience, we're doing a, a session on healthy boundaries. Um, so please look out for the Faith Network podcast as well. And you can actually search it for it on wherever you listen to your podcast too. But we also send out the link via the e-newsletter. So yet again, thank you, Ms. Love, for being with us today. We really appreciate it. And um, are you unmuted? Say, so I'll stop. I was just going to say thanks again for the opportunity. Oh, yes. If, uh, like I said, we will be sharing um, information that you shared with us again. Um, and we look forward to seeing everybody next month at our next Lunch and Learn.